His name is Frank Whittle, and he'll make the greatest contribution to aviation since the Wright brothers. The thought, get rid of the piston engine and substitute for turbine, you might say that came out of the blue. Professional jealousy robs Whittle of the funding he needs to build a prototype. A piston engine goes 2,000 RPM. These engines are going to be turning 16,000 RPM. And so this is a lot of high-speed motion that has to be quelled with mechanical engineering solutions. Whittle's big challenge is a material science challenge, and that is you have to find a way to enclose this combustion to the point that it escapes then through the nozzle of the engine without destroying the engine. He needs high strength, alloys that actually can withstand the high temperature in excess of 1,000 degrees which can put a lot of stress and strain on the physical structure. These mechanical challenges and little money mean that Whittle suffers many setbacks, one of which in April 1937, he'll never forget. Father was in charge of the fuel control and he was signaling somebody else to get the starter motor up to speed. Then he starts putting fuel in the engine began to accelerate. Fine, that's what they were hoping it would do, but the trouble was that it just carried on accelerating. Which he couldn't understand, it was frightening because it went from a sort of a growl to a scream, got up to about 8,000 RPM. Fuel had collected in the bottom of this rather ramshackle combustion chamber and that's what was keeping the engine going, what it was accelerating itself on. Excess fuel is pooling in the combustion chambers. Whittle has lost control over the engine's speed. One of the great difficulties was finding a way to govern the engine, to find just the right amount of fuel to get a steady, productive combustion, but not so much fuel that it would cause the engine to accelerate completely out of control and come completely apart. And he stood there, and he wondered what on earth had happened. And he looked around, and there was nobody around. All, all the mechanics had done a bunk. Through the 1930s, Whittle refines his invention into a marvel of design and material science that will eventually change the world.